Today on BR TV Investigates, how effective are these filter socks? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing with a focus on putting them to the test. This week we're going to find out, are filter socks an effective nutrient export method? For as long as I've been in the hobby, reefers have been debating the value of filter socks, their ability to export nutrients, and the change out frequency required to achieve those results. The theory is these socks capture some amount of the organics like uneaten food, fish poo, and detritus, and by changing the sock out before they fully break down, we're effectively exporting the organics before they have a chance to break down into unwanted nutrients. This means an effective filter sock implementation and maintenance cycle could reduce dependence on more expensive and harder to perform nutrient export methods like water changes. However, before we dive into this entirely, I would like to point out there are other reasons people run filter socks, primarily to significantly reduce the amount of unattractive suspended particles floating around the display, as well as reduce the detritus buildup in the sump and the associated cleaning and maintenance cycle that that would require. So hopefully with today's test, we can hone in on some of the best ways to use filter socks to achieve all of your goals. Our test is fairly simple. We set up five 25 gallon 18 inch cube tanks, all of them with a few fish, an air-driven foam filter, power head for some flow, and some biro-spiro to cycle the tank. The control had no filter sock on it, and the others had a hang-on filter sock with a small power head cycling the water from the tank through the sock. This isn't the exact same as a typical sump design, and to be honest, there's no way to simulate the exact results of your system because they're all so different. But I think we are actually processing the water through the filter sock more times a day than most designs, but it's still pretty representative of an average performance and will provide enough insight that you can apply the data from today's results to your tank. Again, each of these tanks had fish and were fed a single cube of Meister shrimp five days a week, Monday through Friday. Each tank also had a different change out cycle. The control had no filter sock. One sock was chained out every two weeks, one every week, one twice a week, and one every day. This should give us all a pretty solid window into how often we need to change out the socks to be an effective nutrient export method. There's one thing that's becoming increasingly obvious with all the tests that we're running here at BRS TV Investigates, phosphate levels rise with organic input pretty even and predictably. However, nitrate levels do not rise as evenly and predictably from week to week. Sometimes they even drop unexpectedly. This is very likely the result of difficult to control or predict nitrogen cycles that's relying on a variety of different bacteria populations, carbon sources, related nutrients, and bacterial blooms common with newly set up aquariums. We do have some ideas we're testing in the background here, which will hopefully stabilize that process and make things more predictable without impacting the test, and we'll certainly let you know how those work out. If you watched our BRS TV Investigates on testing nitrate test kit accuracy, you'll also know we found many of the nitrate testing methods to produce less than desirable results in seawater, particularly at the low end. It was week five of our two-month filter sock test where we switched to the most accurate and reliable method that we identified. So we will share the N nitrate and phosphate levels on all the tanks today, but I think for this test, the ongoing phosphate levels are going to be the best or more accurate window into the week-to-week -week effectiveness of the filter socks removing organic matter before it has a chance to break down into undesirable nutrients. Starting with the control, which had no filter sock, we ended the eight-week test with 2.39 parts per million phosphate and 34.6 parts per million nitrate. You can see the week-to-week -week increase in phosphate was between 0.3 and 0.5 parts per million. The variance likely tied to the how much of the food the fish ate that week and related to how much of that phosphorus they incorporated into their biomass. Moving on to the end result of changing out the filter socks at various points, I think you're going to see what you might expect, limited results with leaving the socks in for prolonged periods of time and increasing results with changing them out more frequently. Starting with every other week, we saw an end phosphate level of 2.03 and an end nitrate level of 33.8, which was about a 15% reduction in phosphate and nearly identical amount of nitrate. I think this about lines up with my expectations for only swapping the socks out every couple of weeks. Some benefit, but not overwhelmingly effective. Moving on to swapping them out every week, we saw an eight-week phosphate level of 1.92 and a nitrate level of 34.56. This was just shy of a 20% reduction in phosphate and about the same nitrate as the control. Again, this seems like a fair expectation for a filter like this, which gets changed out once a week. 
It's hard to explain why the nitrate levels seem to be unaffected, and I think this will get clearer for us and the community as we run more tests and start to see how the nitrogen process unfolds in different environments. However, when we started changing them out twice a week, we started to see more significant results on both fronts. With a phosphate level of just 1.4 and a nitrate level of 24.86, that's a 41% decrease in phosphate and a 28% reduction in nitrate. I would call this a pretty significant reduction, but at the same time, to achieve those results, you need to be changing them out every three to four days. So for those of you that thought changing them out every day was going to produce even better results, you'd be wrong. With daily changes, we saw nearly identical phosphate of 1.47 and nitrate of 24.43, which is a 38 and 29% reduction respectively. Certainly seems like we found the sweet spot between the maximum organics and nutrient reduction versus as limited amount of maintenance as possible, and it's in that twice a week or three to four day window. So to answer today's BRS TV Investigates question, are filter socks an effective nutrient export method? I'm gonna give this one two ratings. First, I'll give it a solid nine and almost a reef certainty. And at 40% plus reduction in phosphate and almost 30% reduction in nitrate, it's certainly an effective component of a complete nutrient export methodology, as long as you're willing to change them out every three or four days. However, if changing them out that often isn't realistic, and you're a two week or even once a month person, I'm gonna rate this like a three or four and closer to a reef fantasy because a 15% or lower reduction is just less compelling results. So it's hard to know how many people are changing them out every three to four days. For some of you, today's results might be the inspiration that gets you to up your game and change them out more frequently. I have to say that's a lot of work, and kudos to you if you have that type of dedication, but I think this is likely gonna be somewhat of a rarity long term. So if changing them out twice a week just isn't realistic for you, this could be the inspiration or justification for the people who do it weekly to change them out less frequently because there's just a limited difference between every week and two weeks. Overall, I think today's results match general expectations from the reefing community, but help to find them in a usable manner so we can more intelligently design our overall filtration methodology and maintenance schedule. Once we complete these tasks, one of the first things we do is explore if there's a progression or other things reefers might want more insight into related to today's results. I think one pretty obvious progression is exploring how more automated solutions like the Thelene Roller Mat perform in relation to nutrient reduction. For those of you that are not familiar with the roller mat, it works like a filter sock, except the filter pad is wound up in a large roll and it captures the organics as they pass through the thinner pad. As the filter pad gets clogged, it detects that with a higher water level and rolls the organics up into the export roll, which effectively removes them in real time as they're cycled through the tank. I guess I assume that this type of design is going to be more effective than filter socks because the organics are removed more than daily and it's automated so it doesn't require a human being to change them out. But there's certainly some unknowns here, starting with the filter paper is just much thinner, so will it work as well? I can say that this type of thing fits my lifestyle and maintenance desires for a tank, but will it really work better? I hope that we'll be able to tell you that in a few months time. I literally can't wait to see how today's results matched up with your expectations and how they might impact how you maintain your filter socks. Will you change them out less or more frequently? Maybe even remove them altogether. So join the larger conversation over on Reef to Reef. The thread is pinned down below. As always, if you find what we do here valuable, let us know with a quick thumbs up and subscribe because we release new reefing videos every week. See you next week with another BRS TV Investigates.